Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to move a character by adding forces to the rigid body of that character. And the reason why we would want a character to have a rigid body with a dynamic mode is so that other objects which may apply forces to that object uh, can work properly. So if we have like a giant ball coming down the field and it crashes into this character, it might apply a force to him and change the direction in which that character is traveling. That's only possible if we're doing physics through the rigid body 2D uh, or 3D if you have a 3D game. So in order for rigid bodies to work, we obviously have to have one attached to the character. So I'm going to go here and add a rigid body 2D and you'll see it's set to dynamic by default, which is what we want for that kind of physics based play. You'll notice that it has gravity scale out of the box. This means that it will be affected by gravity if there's no ground underneath the character, he's gonna fall down on the screen. Uh, possibly something you want for uh, platforming games and you can customize how much gravity there is in the game uh, by going to the preferences or the physics calculations for the game. Let's just take a look for that. I think it's uh, edit project settings physics 2d and then we have uh, uh, yes uh, gravity so it has a x direction and a y direction and you can see that this is set to real world physics of negative 9.81 you could have gravity to the left though if you wanted to or you could have no gravity at all up to you for your game so now that we have this rigid body 2d we're going to need to reference that in script so that we can add forces to it when keys are pressed so i'm going to add component here and we're going to create a new script i'm going to call it player movement for now keeping it relatively simple um, and pointing out that this is a script for the player's movement which probably means in one way or another it's going to be getting input from the player whether that's wasd on your keyboard or tapping on the screen to move the character so let's go ahead and edit this script in Visual Studio or your editor of choice. Okay, so in this player movement script, the first thing we're gonna need to do is get reference to a rigid body 2D. And I guess I'll just call this play rigid body. There are some default names, uh, rigid body and rigid body 2D for basically deprecated classes that exist in mono behavior. But because those are deprecated, it's recommended that you don't reference them. And instead you get the player rigid body uh, by doing something like get component on a rigid body 2D. Um, so we could do that in awake, or you can manually assign it in the inspector, but I think in this case, we'll just grab it in script when the script awakes. So this is gonna be equal to get component of rigid body 2D. And we'll also require the component of type of rigid body 2D. So that whenever this script is added to the player, it's going to make sure and add one, if it doesn't exist, a rigid body 2D. So right, this should work as long as the rigid body 2D is in the end attached to the player. So now what we can do is on update, we can check if any of the keys are pressed that are relevant to the player. And if so, then we can apply some forces to that rigid body. So first off, I'll check if the player rigid body does not equal null, then we'll proceed. And if not, then I wanna be logging out some warnings to the console. So debug.log warning, rigid body not attached to player. I guess we could get game object dot same. But if the rigid body is attached, then we want to check for input. So I could make this a new method called apply input. We'll go down here and make that method. So public void apply input. And this method is going to check to see if any player keys are down. And if so, perform relevant actions. So for seeing what key settings we have applied to our game, we can go to edit project settings and input, and you'll be able to see the default controls for the game. And this includes stuff for basically joysticks, for keyboard controls, and I believe you can set stuff up for like uh, external devices as well, if you have like a game controller. So ideally we'd like getting the input to not be specific to the controller, but we only care about the value and then the input manager handles which controller is assigning what value to the input fields over here. 
So uh, one way we can do that for left, right, up, down movement is to check the axis input. So we can do get axis. So let's get axis and the name of the axis I think might be X. I'm not actually 100% sure on that. We'll have to uh, test it a bit. Oh, and actually this returns a value. So we want to take the float X input and we'll do that by getting the axis value. And then we'll get flow y input and input dot get axis. Okay, so in theory that should give us an x and y input. So if x input does not equal zero, then we're going to want to apply that x input as a force on the rigid body. So let's get the play rigid body and add force. And that force is going to be a vector two. Okay, so in order to apply a force onto the object, we're going to need to create a vector 2 for that force. And we can do that by creating a new vector 2, getting an x value, and then a y value here. And then finally, we apply that as a force to the rigid body 2D. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking it's better probably to do this only once per cycle. So if we have like... A jump going on and x input for moving left and right we'd probably rather get those values combine them into one vector here and then apply the force once rather than trying to add force multiple times in the same script to the same object so for right now we'll just have the y set to zero we won't do jumping yet but with the x input if the x input is not equal to zero but with the x input we can get a x force here and the x force is going to be equal to x input times move speed which is a variable we'll just set up here in a minute and then uh, times time dot delta time because we only want to add a force relevant to the amount of time it's been since the last frame so if it took one second for a frame to occur for some horrible reason um, then we want to apply a lot more force, obviously, than if the frame took a hundredth of a second, since this is applying every uh, frame update. Oh, and also, now that I think about it, because we're dealing with physics here, we should be doing all of this on fixed update, not update, so that this will occur a set number of times per frame and have more consistency. Unity does recommend that you do this whenever you're doing physics-based calculations. Uh, so now we need a variable for move speed, and we'll probably set this as a public variable, so public float move speed, and we can default this to 1 or 5 or whatever, uh, but generally we'll set this on a character-by-character -character basis to determine how fast they should move. And we take this x-force, we add that to the vector, and then that force gets added here so we don't need to worry about if this is zero because if the x input is zero there's no input which means of this multiplication it's going to result in zero anyway so basically if the key is pressed down then it's going to move but if it's not pressed down then it's not going to move or rather it's going to add a force to the object so the difference is this is more of an acceleration based thing if the object still has force in play that hasn't been reduced by friction or other objects stopping it like a wall, it'll keep moving. So you can actually, in the inspector, um, for the object, you can add stuff like linear drag and angular drag to determine how quickly those forces should fade out. Mostly something you just need to kind of tweak around with here and figure out exactly how you want this character to interact with the world. So one more thing, I'm gonna make this rigid body private because the script is already grabbing the rigid body, if it's attached anyway, we don't really need to have the uh, game designer mess around with it and the editor. We just need to make sure that there is a rigid body attached here. Um, so we don't need this to be manually set and we can make that private. So let's go ahead and see if this works at all. So by the looks of it, I have the axis name wrong. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. So let's see, input horizontal vertical okay so these are the names actually horizontal and vertical so let's go ahead and get that there and these are names that you can change by the way okay so i'm pressing left and right here and we can see that it's not moving 
or at least it doesn't look like it's moving, so we'll need to debug the script and figure out exactly what's going on there. So I'm gonna add some breakpoints here, attach the debugger to Unity, and let's go ahead and figure this out. So we can see that it's hitting the breakpoints on every frame, but it's kind of gonna be a pain to debug it like this because this is a on update physics calculation, so it's gonna break in here every single time that the game loads. So I'm thinking, uh, an easier way to do this might be to just run some debug logs to the console. And let's debug.log um, if we can get the velocity of the player rigid body. Let's go ahead and do that as well. And for the sake of making it a little bit easier to read, uh, let's actually label these. So let's see, velocity. And let's go ahead and save it and hit play one more time. Okay, so we can see that it is getting X force and Y force when we do hit the plus button there. The velocity, however, is remaining zero. And one of the problems with vectors is that you don't really get the floating point value there. And you can see one of the problems with logging a vector to the console is that it does cut off a lot of decimal points. So you can't really tell if this is actually exactly zero or if it is some very small number. So what we can do is instead log the float values. So play rigid body velocity dot y. And let's try that one more time. So kind of weird. We can see that it is an infinitesimally small number, but it's not exactly zero. Let's see if we bump the movement speed up times 100. Does anything change here? No, it doesn't. And I'm guessing what's happening here is that it's actually stuck on the ground beneath it. So what would happen if we say, uh, took this wall ground and moved it down a bit? Okay, so we can take a look at the box colliders that exist over here, or in this case, um, these colliders are actually a tile map collider. But in any case, it's applying that collider to everything that is on this grid, every tile. And we can see that it goes a little bit above the robot's feet. But the robot has a box collider, which actually goes down below that. So two box colliders are overlapping each other. They're basically stuck on each other. So I'm going to manipulate this box collider's position a little bit. And actually, um, because currently we're doing a dynamic rigid body game, it might make more sense to use a capsule collider even. Capsule colliders tend to work better when a character is close to falling off an edge in terms of modern 2D game physics, so uh, this may be preferable. So let's go ahead and lower this down and let's check the grid collider. Uh, seems okay. We'll, we'll give this a shot and see if this works. Okay, so <laughs> the robot fell over, so that's something. At least it's not getting stuck in the collider right now. Let's see if I bump the movement speed up, if it's able to move to the right or not. Okay, doesn't look like it. So one thing we might want here is to add a rotation constraint, not allowing this sprite to fall over on its side due to gravity. So let's freeze the rotation on that character. And I'm also going to increase the default move speed to 10. Um, so that hopefully if, if something is going to happen, that it's a lot more obvious when it does. Okay, so I hit right I hit left here and it's still not going so let's take a look at the collider really quick okay it looks like the collider is above the ground and uh, you might also want to lower the colliders on the ground or uh, change the sprite so that that ends up happening or uh, cutting off that little top area uh, whatever you need to do Okay, so as it turns out, the only thing that wasn't going quite right now is that the value is so low in the move speed that the player, um, I guess the drag keeps it from moving before it can actually move. So it looks like the current fix was actually to increase the move speed because the uh, natural drag of a dynamic rigid body object uh, was keeping it from moving basically because the drag was greater than the force being added to it but now that the force the move speed is set to a thousand it can move a lot more like what we would expect and you can see that when i let go of the input button it slows down on its own which is pretty cool so that aspect of the physics engine is already included for us and if i fall off the edge the gravity goes ahead and takes place 
So that means obviously that the character sits on top of colliders like this ground by default and we don't need to write anything else for that part of the script. So one little detail here, um, having the move speed set to a thousand might be a really big number and kind of displeasing to look at. I think usually people like to use numbers that are a lot smaller. So one thing you could do is have a global variable, something like a move speed multiplier. And you can just take whatever move speed you have here and then multiply it by that global modifier before you assign it to the actual character. But if you do that, then you need to make sure at any time when you actually assign a force to the rigid body, you need to add in that global multiplier um, before adding in the final force to make everything consistent. You could do that with a manager class that manages the movement of all characters within your game. It's kind of up to you on how you want to do that precisely.